All right, Calher, will these comments cause a backlash against LaShawn McCoy? Well, yeah, on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on social media. I don't think when he goes home or he goes to his church or something, it will. But, I mean, listen, here's what we know happens with Twitter and social media. You either lean left or you're a racist or stupid. Like, you can, you can, like you always say it's rigged. You can have sort of one opinion on Kaepernick on social media or you're a bad human being. So, yes, they'll be, they'll be... And by the way, he, he says what a lot of us know is, yeah, if you're Tom Brady or Odell Beckham, you can be more of a, quote, distraction. Greg Hardy, we don't like what he did. You're allowed. This has always been... Pro sports has always been about your talent and what comes with it. And if you're Brady or Odell Beckham, your talent's so ridiculous that you can kind of get away with stuff. I mean, Odell Beckham's got some distractive qualities. He's Odell Beckham. I thought what he said there was like, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what everybody knows what pro sports is about. I don't even think we ran the best comments from McCoy. He also said, I think the whole Kaepernick situation in this country, you can believe what you want, freedom of speech. I think maybe they could choose a better platform to state their beliefs. Then again, again his point is, you're protesting the national anthem. You're going to cause a different conversation than the one you're pointing to. And then he says, one thing I've learned about is that people in America, they're followers. There's some people that if you ask about these topics, they'll say what they heard, not what they know. That's pretty Everybody, smart. That's, that's, that's again, very accurate. My point, and I say it more flippantly and maybe more divisively, but again, it's turned into the ice bucket challenge. Everybody run out and take a knee. They don't know what they're doing. They just know it's the cool thing to do. It's bell bottoms. It's gold chains. It's, it's saggy jeans. It's skinny jeans. It's a fad. Is he going to, is he going to ha have a backlash? Yes, he's going to, because he stated how he felt about it. And that's, and is that, is Cap a distraction? Yes. Not from Cap, but from the media standpoint, he will be a distraction because you're going to have to answer the questions and everything comes into play. You're either, and I liken it, and I know one guy committed a crime, Ray Carruth, he committed a crime, Cap didn't commit a crime, but I liken it to that when you had no choice but to answer a question when there was a murder investigation sure. going on and the FBI are asking you questions. You have to give an answer. With Cap, completely different situation. In that locker room, if something goes on, you're going to have to give an answer, and you're going to end up either being for, for Cap or against Cap, and either way, you have to deal with it. It's an ongoing issue. You have to take a side. And, you, and, and it's going to be one of those things where you got to... You have to play at a certain level Come on, Johnny and bring Cox. something. I, I, Here we go, Johnny Cox. There, there is, first of all, <laughs> listen, let me tell you, I love Shady. I know him. Good dude. Um, wrong person, in my opinion, to be speaking on this. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. See, <laughs> Why? Why? He knows. Oh, he can't have an opinion? Yeah, he can have an opinion, but, but his stance. Let me tell you something. I'll say it again. You've heard me say it before. Distractions used by players, coaches, and owners is nothing more than a weakness, okay? You talked about they have to answer the question. You don't have to answer anything. You got to give a 15-minute... You're required to give X amount of time to the media. And what players always fail to remember is that you're always in control of the, of the, of the interview. You can choose to answer what you want to, answer how you want to, answer when you want to. Seth, okay? what you're talking about, though, those days are gone, man. Those days no, are gone. Not. Yes, it is, because what no, happened... No, no, this... The backlash that I'm talking about, we aren't talking about from media, from coaches, from anything. We're just talking about the public. Twitter. When we used to have a locker room, you could answer a question or not because that locker room was closed. Now, not only is that locker room open and they have the cameras right here, they're tweeting out all of this stuff. They're putting it on their website so everyone sees that you didn't answer or you did answer or whatever that you said no comment, that, well, you won't take a stand for him? That's what I'm saying. It, no, my, you can't my pick a side my, regardless. My, my thing is, you know, if, if I'm in that locker room, at the end of the day, I can pick and choose what I want to talk about. You can tweet what you want to. I'm there to work. I'm only fulfilling my media obligations because that's what's in my contract. It says, sit there and answer some questions. I don't have to tell you what you want to hear. I get to tell you what I think. I get to tell you what's going on in here and what's in here. That's it in a, in a nutshell. And the thing that bothers me about this whole, well, you know, this player, that player, um, Stephen White had a great article on Kaepernick on, on SB Nation about a week ago. Oh, yeah. and, and, and I loved it because, you know, because you know what he did? He, he, gave, he put the numbers down. He talked about Cap as a player. 
He said, I want to do this, and I want to give you film so we can remove the player from the issue. And now that you see that he's not as bad a player as everyone tried to make him out to be, now let's talk about the black ball issue, because that, in a, in, okay. in, in a nutshell, is what it's really okay, all let me about. Let ask you, though. When I said I would never put Tim Tebow on my team, and I said that multiple times, Cowherd's anti-Christian. If I say I wouldn't put um, Johnny Manziel on my team, I've said that. He's a distraction. I said Michael Sam distraction. Josh Rosen two weeks ago distraction. Kaepernick's too newsworthy. Are there real distractions? Because what's happened in this conversation is if you call Kaepernick a distraction, you're racist. So I called Tebow a distraction. I think Manziel and his drinking's a distraction. Are there real distractions? I'm going to go... You know, you, I'll ask you in a locker room. Are there? Can I ever use distractions I, without... I, I said yes. I lived it. I lived through Ray Carruth. Like, it was... It was a distraction. It was, it was impossible to focus on exactly what you're supposed to be focusing on, football at work, when every... You're, you're in the middle of the a play and you see someone get tapped on the shoulder and they got to go answer questions. You're waiting for them to come ask you these questions. It, it was a distraction. But you're talking about murder, man. No, no, no. Yeah. Wait, talk, you're talking Dude, about hold murder. On, hold on, listen to what I said. I, I said there, no comparison in what the guys have done. Cap has done nothing wrong, OK? Absolutely. Ray did something wrong. I'm talking about... At giving you an example of a real distraction when you have to this, answer Dad. questions. Let me add this. What he's talking about, let's say there's a police-involved shooting in Chicago next week. Somebody, whatever team caps on, it may be Carolina, it may be Dallas. Now they're going to come in, Kaepernick, what do you think about the police-involved shooting in Chicago? And then they're going to go ask his teammates. And they're like, man, I, I don't want to talk about that.